Dehancer is a pretty impressive film emulation plugin for your video editing software, and I've noticed that there are a lot of reviews of Dehancer coming out lately. Many of these review videos, I mean, they just run through the features of Dehancer, but not so many tell you whether it's actually worth the money, and it can cost a lot of money. So, in this video, I'm gonna tell you why you absolutely need this plugin, but also why you absolutely should look elsewhere. And I'll also tell you whether saving money with one of the light versions is the way to go instead. And by the way, Dehancer has an app for iOS as well, and they also have plugins for Photoshop and other photo editing platforms, so it's not just for video, but I'm only reviewing the video version today. Now, you should know that I'm using DaVinci Resolve to review Dehancer, but just about everything I talk about applies to any version of the Dehancer plugin, so don't run away just because you don't use Resolve. Okay, so just so you know, Dehancer did give me a pro license in exchange for reviewing this, and I've, I mean, I needed a copy, otherwise I couldn't review it. They haven't put any restrictions on what I say in the video, and they also encouraged me to be really honest. And if you watch my review videos, you know I'm gonna do that anyway, but it's refreshing to hear a company actually start the conversation with that. They also gave me a secret code, which you can use to save 10%, and I'll give you that secret code at the end of this video. Now, I have a lot of experience with shooting film, but as a professional photographer, not as a cinematographer. I shot a lot of weddings, portraits, and model tests all on film. So when I think of film, I think of like, you know, vibrant colors and a warm feel and creamy highlights and skin tones. So I find it a little bit weird and a little bit funny that this kind of look is what many people associate with the film look. Low contrast, grainy, desaturated images that look like they were shot through some sort of mud filter. Fortunately, Dehancer can do any of those looks. You want warm and creamy, it's got it. You want muddy and crappy, whatever you want. In fact, as of now, there are 63 different film stock emulations you can choose from. And from what I hear, there's more coming down the pipeline all the time. It's really important to stress that Dehancer is not just a collection of LUTs or lookup tables. It's an entire like film emulation suite. And I can't tell if the base film looks are somehow mathematically calculated or they're just LUTs. And and Dehancer's description on their website is admittedly a little vague. But when you add in things like grain, halation, bloom, and a bunch of other modules, it's obvious Dehancer goes way beyond something a LUT could do on its own. And typically with LUTs, you have to get your clips into the right color space first. If you have shot in log format, for example, you might have to convert to Rec. 709 before using a LUT. You don't have to do any conversions with Dehancer. You can use log footage by just specifying what camera you're using at the input section, and Dehancer takes care of the rest. You can use Rec. 709 footage just as easily, and this could potentially simplify your color grading process. So as just a quick teaser as to what Dehancer can do, I've got a few different film stock types on the same scene. I'm not using any of the other modules on this except exposure controls and a little grain. And as you can see, you can go from subtle changes to wildly different ones just by selecting different film stocks as your starting point. The Pro version offers a feature called film compression, and this is actually compression of the highlights. Negative film tends to have a lot of headroom in the highlights, and when you scan it or when you print it, that headroom is kind of compressed down or squashed down without losing any detail or without like clipping it. The Hanser allows you to simulate this compression in the highlights, and it allows you to bring out detail in the highlights. While it's not magically going to fix your footage if you overexposed it and you clipped your whites, you can reduce that blown out look by using highlight compression. But really, that's a side benefit. It's not the actual point of highlight compression. Still, it's a nice little kind of subtle feature that allows you to simulate that really impressive headroom that actual film gives you with your highlights. Now, unfortunately, the light version doesn't have this option, and we'll talk about the light version in a little bit. And by the way, when I shoot film, I really take advantage of that headroom that negative film has, what I'll do is, is I'll expose for the shadows. And what that means is I make sure my shadows are kind of the mid-tone, and then I'm actually overexposing the image by one stop, two stops, sometimes even more. And the film can handle it, and it ends up with these just gorgeous, gorgeous highlights that I, you, it's hard to find anywhere else except with Dehancer. Like I said at the beginning, my goal isn't to give you a rundown of every single feature in Dehancer, and this is definitely not a how-to tutorial video. There are plenty of videos on the internet covering that. However, if you are interested in me doing a tutorial on Dehancer, let me know in the comments. But one of the features I do want to talk about is Dehancer's grain simulation. Now, Dehancer has done a really fabulous job with grain. I've compared it really carefully to DaVinci's built-in grain function or plug-in, and 
the answer is doing a much better emulation. So DaVinci Resolve's built-in grain plugin basically appears to be placing an image of grain, like a photograph of grain over the top of your clip, but as an overlay. And, and that's not how grain works. If you think about it, I mean, film grain is like the pixels on your camera sensor or your computer monitor. So each grain is like one pixel on your sensor. And if grain is big and chunky, then you should have less resolution than an image with smaller grain. Kind of like when an image is pixelated. You should lose detail when the pixels get bigger. With Resolve's grain simulation, you don't lose resolution when you crank up the grain size. With the Hanser, you do lose resolution, which is way more authentic even though it sounds counterintuitive. Why would you want to lose resolution? Well, when you're trying to simulate grain, you actually do want to lose resolution. So let me show you. I've got this image. It's blown up to 300%. Now watch the lines on the building's roof. When I crank up the grain amount, the detail is eventually just completely wiped out and you can't see the lines anymore. This happens no matter whether I'm using a large grain or a small grain. However, when I use Resolve's built-in grain simulation, no matter what I adjust, those lines never go away. Large grain, small grain, sharp, soft, you can still see those lines. Now that is not an accurate emulation of how grain behaves. Now, whether you'd be able to notice the difference between Resolve's grain and Dehancer's grain on YouTube, where everything gets really smacked with heavy file compression, I don't know. But if you're playing your videos back at full res and no compression, I think you'll notice the difference. But you know what, why don't we actually do a test right now? I'll throw up some uh, clips here using Dehancer's grain and um, Resolve's grain. Let me know what you think in the comments. Can you tell the difference? Yeah, probably you can tell the difference. Does one look better than the other? That's what I wanna know when you're looking at this on YouTube. Also, let me know what device you use when you're watching. Are you looking on a computer screen? Are you looking on a phone? That kind of thing, because I suspect that makes a big difference as well. Dehancer also has a halation function. Halation is when light bounces around on the film in places where it shouldn't. This effect is really strong when light goes all the way through the film, bounces off the back of the camera like the pressure plate, and then actually go, shines back through the film on the other side, kind of re-exposing the film. So the light is kind of ricocheting all around inside the camera and actually inside the film layer itself. The end result is this sort of red or orange halo around bright areas or high contrast areas of your image, hence the name halation, like halo. Now for the halation effect, Dehancer has presets for different size films, but I suspect this is just a quick way to either like crank up or reduce the amount of halation. Now you can access the individual parameters and there are quite a few of them just by selecting the custom option. Now Resolve's built-in halation effect does have one feature that Dehancer doesn't have and that's the ability to see what part of the image is going to be affected. In other words, what part of the image is the source that will eventually be used to generate a halo. Now this helps you dial in which contrasty bits are actually gonna be halated. I don't know if that's a word, is that a, is halated a word? Then separately, you can also view the halation halos by themselves and then fine tune the effect. Resolve's effect though is a little weird because you can get green as well as red halos if your threshold is too low. And I don't actually know how authentic that is. Now Dehancer will let you show only the halation halos as well. And it's a button called mask only. Uh, however, there's a little bug with this mask only button. Sometimes you can't actually turn it on, it's grayed out. So you have to, turn off the halation effect, turn on the mask only, and then turn the halation effect back on. I don't know why I let I let Dehancer know about that. Maybe they'll fix it in an upcoming version. Not a big deal. Now, unlike Resolve's version, you can't show only the source areas that will be used for halation, which, I mean, I, I don't know if that's a big deal or not. It's just a difference. But overall, Dehancer's version of Halation, I think is more subtle than Da Vinci's and probably more lifelike. I did also notice that the mask only mode or just show the Halation only mode doesn't always seem to show the Halation correctly. So you can see right here, the silhouette of the surfer. When I turn Halation on and off, you can see that reddish hue, which is the Halation. But when I turn the mask mode on and off, there's nothing showing up there. Dehancer also has some modules that are not strictly related to like physical film stock, like Bloom and Gateweave and Film Breath. The, these modules, they, they simulate like other 
aspects of film production or projection or development and even vintage lens effects, for example, with like Bloom. And if you want to see sprocket holes in the edge of the film, Dehancer has a pretty thorough overscan module. Now, it's not something you'd use every day. Well, maybe you would, but I wouldn't because I feel like it would get a little cheesy kind of quickly, but it can be fun. So is Dehancer for you? Now, if you're just looking for the occasional vintage look, you don't need Dehancer. I mean, Vintage in many people's minds just means like bad color and low contrast and really grainy. Now you can just throw on a lot and some grain and you're good to go. You could probably even do that for free. However, if you're interested in having your videos look more organic, you know, like less sterile, less digital looking, or if you're someone who really enjoys the beauty that you can find in limitations, like what film has, then Dehancer is the right choice. Shooting real film is limiting and it's also a pain in the butt, trust me, but I shoot almost exclusively on film as a photographer because the pain is actually worth the result. And Dehancer does have that potential to really add that organic beauty of film to your digital video footage. All right, so let's get a little dirty for a minute and talk about money. Dehancer is expensive. If you buy the pro version with a lifetime license, it's currently $450. Now, if you're editing or grading feature films or shorts or documentaries, things like that, then Getting the pro version with a lifetime license is probably the way you want to go. Now, if you don't think you're going to use this quite as much as a full-time professional would, then you, of course, could buy a, a smaller, shorter package, like a three-month, a six-month, a one-year option. But I personally hate subscriptions. You might not feel that way. And by the way, you can also buy the grain and halation plugin separately, but I don't know, I think that kind of misses the point. Now, there is a light version of Dehancer, which is worth considering if you're on the fence about this. It's $200 for a lifetime license. Now, you do miss out on some of the features, of course. The film compression is something you don't get, which I mean, can be reproduced in other ways, but not as easily. The biggest module you miss out in, on, in my opinion, is the halation module. Again, there are other ways to get halation simulation, but Dehancer does it very elegantly, and it's nice to have it all in one place. With the light version, you do get all the film profiles and you get the grain simulator. And I mean, I could go over item by item and compare the two options, but I'm not gonna waste your time. You can just go to their website and figure it out yourself. You can also get a free trial and play around with it for a week and see if it's for you. So, I mean, what do you have to lose? Other than you might fall in love with the Hanser and then you feel really compelled to buy it. Hey, another way to save money is to use the discount code Dehancer gave me. You get a 10% discount. I get an affiliate commission. So when you're checking out with your order, enter the code Matthew to save some money. Oh God, I sound like, I sound like I'm selling stuff now. Enter that secret code Matthew and save some. Anyway, I mean, if you want. So I've, I've included a link to Dehancer in the video notes. So, okay, that's the end of this review. 